So this is the second part of the lecture for enzyme and we will start at specificity of enzymes. So the enzyme exhibit different levels of selectivity or sensitivity. Uh, specificity for substrate. So this enzyme specificity is the extent to which the enzyme's activity is restricted to a specific substrate or a specific group of substrate or a specific type of chemical bond or a specific type of chemical reaction. And the degree of enzyme specificity is determined by the active site. So some active sites accommodate only one particular compound whereas others can accommodate a family of closely related compounds. So these are the type specificity of enzyme specificity. So we have bond, group, substrate or absolute, optical or stereo, and geometrical. So we will start at bond. So this is the relative or linkage specificity. So this enzyme will act on a particular type of chemical bond irrespective of the rest of the molecular structure. So example R phosphatases. This hydrolyzes the phosphate esters uh, bonds in all types of phosphate esters. So another example is peptidases. So this is a member of the group of proteinases or proteases. So these peptidases will hydrolyze uh, any peptide bonds. Another is the group specificity. So this enzyme will act only on molecules that have a specific functional group such as hydroxyl, amino, or phosphate group. So this uh, the level of specificity is moderate, but more than that of bond specificity. So, example is carboxyl peptidase. So, this will cleave the amino acid one at a time. So, from the carboxyl end of the peptide chain or peptide bond. So, if there is a peptide bond, this carboxyl peptidase will cut one at a time the amino acid or the peptide bond starting from the C terminal or the carboxyl terminal. Another one is the amino peptidase. So this will cleave also the amino acid one at a time but will start at the end of the N terminal as you can see here. Another one is pepsin. So this pepsin is a digestive enzyme and can hydrolyze a peptide bond in which the amino group is contributed by an aromatic amino acid such as phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. So this pepsin will only hydrolyze those that are aromatic amino acid in a peptide chain. So if there is a phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan, iyahan ng ikat, iyahan ng i-hydrolyze. Another one is trypsin. So this is a serine protease of the digestive system. This can hydrolyze a peptide bond in which the amino group is contributed by any basic amino acids such as lysine, arginine, and histidine. So for trypsin, yahapod nga i-break, nga peptide bond is for basic amino acid. So the next one is substrate or absolute specificity. So it has a very high level of enzyme specificity. So this will only catalyze one reaction or uh, one reaction to only one substrate. So example is lactase. It can only hydrolyze the beta-1,4 glycosidic bond of the lactose in order to yield galactose and glucose. So that is for lactase. Another example is urease. So this urease uh, is used by some plants, fungi, and bacteria to catalyze a reaction in which the urea, only the urea is converted into ammonium and bicarbonate. So that is substrate or absolute. It will only catalyze only one reaction or uh, only one reaction to only one substrate. Another is stereo specificity or this is the optical specificity. So the enzyme will act on a particular stereoisomer. And this is the highest level of enzyme specificity because the enzyme is specific not only to the substrate but also to its optical configuration. So example, the L-amino acid oxidase will only catalyze the oxidation of the L form of the amino acid but not the D form of the same amino acid. Okay, the exam another example, alpha amylase, this hydrolyzes only the alpha glycosidic bond but not the beta glycosidic bond. Another level is geometric. So this is a single enzyme can act on different substrates having similar molecular geometry and it is the least specific level of a specificity of enzyme. So example is the alcohol, de alcohol dehydrogenase can oxidize both the ethanol and the methanol to yield corresponding aldehydes because 
both the uh, both alcohols have the similar molecular geometry so that is geometric specificity now here again are the different types of enzyme specificity and their level uh, as you can see here the highest and the number one uh, level of uh, enzyme specificity is the stereo or the optical uh, specificity followed by substrate or absolute and then the group the bond or the relative specificity and the list or the uh, last uh, level of specificity is the geometric geometrical specificity now let's go to enzyme kinetics it is the study of the enzyme reaction rates or velocity and the condition which affects this so we have to know about velocities rate of the enzyme catalyzed reaction as defined in mathematical way and the order of reaction like the zero order and the first order reaction so this is the general reaction scheme of the enzyme catalyzed reaction the e here stands for enzyme s substrate es is the enzyme substrate complex P is for product. So the K here are the rate constant. K1 is for the forward reaction or to produce the complex. And K-1 is the breakdown of this EF, ES uh, complex. Now K2 is the co rate constant for the formation of the products. Now the enzyme interacts with the substrate. So the enzyme will interact with the substrate by bonding to its active site to form this enzyme substrate complex which is denoted as ES. So this is then followed by the decomposition of the ES to regenerate the free enzymes, the free enzyme and the new product. So this is the catalytic cycle of the enzyme. Now, the rate or velocity of a reaction, which is denoted by V, is the number of sides, a small letter V, is the number of substrate molecules converted to produce to product per unit time. And this is calculated using this formula, K2, rate constant, okay, multiplied by the concentration of the complex. Now, the, com the concentration of complex will depend on the velocity of the ES formation from E plus S and the velocity of its dissociation to regenerate the E plus S or to form E plus P. And so, the change or the partial derivative of ES or the delta ES or the change in the concentration of ES versus the concentration uh, versus the change in time is equal to this uh, equation. Now we have michaelis menten equation. So this equation is a mathematical model that is used to analyze simple kinetic data. The equation describes how reaction velocity varies with substrate concentration and this is the michaelis menten Equation. You have to familiarize this equation. And the V sub O there is the initial reaction velocity. The V max is the maximal velocity. Km is the Michaelis constant, while the S with the close and open bracket is the substrate concentration. So we now have the Michaelis constant and it is equal to this formula. Now this Km or Michaelis maintain constant reflects the affinity of the enzyme for that substrate. So, kung unsa siya ka um, associated, uh, the substrate, uh, how the active site and the substrate is associated. So, we have, if we have a low KM, this reflects a very high affinity of the enzyme for the substrate because a low concentration, a low concentration of substrate is needed to reach a velocity of one half <clears throat> A velocity of one half v max. So if you have a very high km, this will reflect a low, okay, a low. This enzyme to here, a low affinity. So this Michaelis constant is a numerical value for the strength of binding of a substrate to an enzyme, an important parameter in enzyme kinetics. And a low km again, a very low km value is more desired because it will give a uh, show us that there is a high affinity of this enzyme and substrate now this is the rate and the observed kinetics of an enzymatic reaction that depends on the substrate concentration so the concentration of the enzyme delta d is constant so this is the diagrams this is the at the x Axis, the concentration of yours, uh, of the substrate, and then the initial or the velocity. So at low concentration of the substrate, there is a first order kinetics that is observed. Okay? 
but at higher substrate concentration, this is where the enzyme is saturated, the constant reaction rate characteristic of zero order is observed. So this constant rate, this means that the enzyme is saturated with the substrate, is the Vmax for the enzyme, a value that can be roughly estimated from the graph. Now, <coughs> so as you can see here, this is again our michaelis menten equation. So for example, your um, michaelis menten constant is greater, very, very large compared to your concentration of the substrate. And so you can assume or you can cancel out the uh, sub uh, concentration of substrate here in the de denominator leaving or giving this equation. Now, this, <coughs> again, we... Uh, we want that our Km is low to have a very high affinity of um, of a uh, very high affinity of um, substrate and substrate and enzyme. But if our Km is very low, means lower affinity of enzyme towards the substrate, just like this one, so mas daghan atong enzyme compare sa ato ang uh, substrate the enzymes are not saturated, diba? as you can see here in the graph. And so, if this is very low, our initial velocity is directly proportional to our substrate concentration. And so, this is the first order reaction. Now, when we assume or when there is a very large number of substrate concentration, and so our Km now, can be cancelled out because of this large number. So, once it is cancelled out, both the concentration of the substrate is also cancelled out. So, this part here is this, okay, in this um, dem, um, illustration. So, na po, ang atong enzyme is now already saturated. Tanan enzyme na naan na siya substrate, naka-attach na ng mga substrate. And so, our uh, Km is very low. And now we have a high affinity of enzyme towards the substrate. Again, the enzymes is, is saturated. And so it will cancel out. And we will now have this equation leaving our initial velocity is equal to our maximum velocity. And this is now the zero order reaction or the steady state. So this steady state condition is the condition in which the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex remains constant in spite of continuous turnover. And the order of reaction is demonstrated by leveling off. Okay, this leveling off of the curve. So that is our zero order reaction. So remember this one. Okay, so in here, if our Km is larger than our substrate concentration, our initial velocity is directly proportional to our substrate concentration, giving, the uh, giving us the first order of reaction. But if our substrate concentration is now very large, that means our enzymes are saturated, and so our initial velocity is now equal to the maximum velocity, giving us the steady state or the zero order, rea order reaction, and this is demonstrated by leveling off of the curve. So, when the rate of the reaction is half of its maximum value, the substrate concentration is equal to the Michaelis constant. So, for example, with this our equation, kung ato ang substrate or atong, uh, substrate concentration is equal to the Michaelis constant, okay, we will give or the velocity, initial velocity is just one half of the maximum velocity. So, again, when the rate of the reaction is half its maximum value, the substrate concentration is equal to the Michaelis constant. Now, the equation uh, Michaelis Menten has a plot of initial concentration versus substrate concentration, uh, initial velocity, I mean, to the substrate concentration. So it is not always possible to measure the Vmax because of the gradual upward slope. That is why in experimental determination of the Michaelis constant and the maximum uh, velocity, there are several several rearrangements of the Michaelis-Menten equation and will transform into a straight-line equation 
and that is what we call the line weaver burke double reciprocal plot. So this equation now has the form of a straight line, which is now can be straight line y equals mx plus b. Diba? So this, um, the 1 over v takes the place of the y coordinate, y axis, and the 1 over um, substrate concentration takes place the x axis. So the slope of the line, the m, so this is y equals mx plus b. So our slope is the km over v max, and the y intercept is the 1 over v. Vmax. So that is how we can calculate the Michaelis constant and the maximum velocity by using the line weaver burke double reciprocal plot. Now, such a line can be extrapol extrapolated to high values of substrate concentration. So once that might be unattainable because of solubility limits or the cost of the substrate. So the extrapolated line can be used to obtain the Vmax. Now you have the slope already with your line and then the Vmax, you can then calculate the, uh, or we or we have the Michaelis constant, we have the slope and so we can calculate the Vmax. Now let's go to factors affecting enzyme activity. So these are different factors that we can affect the enzyme's activity. So first is the temperature. Enzymes are most active at an optimum temperature and enzymes shows little activity at low temperature and the enzyme lose activity or it will become inactive at high temperature as denaturation occurs. So at lower temp, the activity of the enzyme will slow down but at high temperature, this alters the activity site of the enzyme. So the temperature that produces maximum activity for an enzyme is known as the optimum temperature for that enzyme. And this optimum temperature is the temperature at which the enzyme exhibits maximum activity. So for human enzymes, the optimum temperature is around 37 degrees Celsius, and that is our normal body temperature. And it has a range of 35 and 40 degrees Celsius. So when a person who has a fever where body core temperature exceeds 40 degrees Celsius, it can be a life-threatening situation because such temperature is sufficient to initiate enzyme denaturation. Or, kung madenature itong enzyme, and so, mawala iyahang activity. So the loss of function of critical enzymes, particularly those of the central nervous system, can result in dysfunction sufficient to cause death. While for other uh, other nga mga say tawag ganyan, like bacteria so for optimum temperature of bacteria like thermophilic bacteria they are found in hot springs they have optimum temperature of 70 degrees celsius so the next one is ph so enzymes are most active at the optimum ph so biochemical buffers help maintain the optimum ph for an enzyme and changes in ph can result in enzyme denaturation and subsequent loss of catalytic activity. So that is why, again, uh, ato ang body has buffers in order to control the change or the drastic change of pH that can result in enzyme denaturation or the loss of catalytic activity inside our body. Now, the catalytic process usually requires that the enzyme and substrates have specific chemical groups in either an ionized or an ionized state in order to interact and extremes of pH can also lead to denaturation of the enzyme because the structure of the catalytically active protein molecule depends on the ionic character of the amino acid side chain. So for example, um, catalytic activity may require that an amino group of enzyme be in the protonated form. At alkaline pH, this group is deprotonated and the rate of the reaction therefore declines. So that is why we have, as add in here, for pH, for proteins, we have acidic and basic amino acid in also in order for us uh, to um, work on this uh, pH inside our body. So optimum pH of, for enzyme is variable. So each enzyme has a characteristic optimum pH, which usually falls within the physiological pH range of 7 to 7.5, except for digestive enzyme. So, example is pepsin. So, pepsin in our stomach can best function 
at pH 2. That is why our stomach has acid or acidic. And also in our intestinal intestines, we have trypsin. So it's be, it best functions at pH 8 or more on basic. Okay, basic na solution. So a variation from normal pH can also affect substrate causing either protonation or deprotonation of groups on the substrate as mentioned earlier. So this factor is also the, the, the reason for the pickles and other pickled foods do not readily undergo spoilage, spoilage, spoilage that is due to the acidic condition associated with their preparation. So this acidic condition significantly reduces the enzymatic activity of any microorganism present. So another factor that affects enzyme activity is the concentration of the enzyme. So if the amount of substrate present is kept constant, and the enzyme concentration is increased, the reaction rate proportionately increases because more substrate molecules can be accommodated in a given amount of time. So, imagine if the gan kag enzymes, meaning mag-increase po imo hang rate of reaction, tungod kay daghan man ang ma-accommodate nga substrate sa imong daghan nga uh, concentration sa enzymes. And so, the plot will be uh, just like this one. So, Okay, the next one is the concentration of the substrate. So, at constant enzyme concentration, the rate of reaction increases as the substrate concentration increases and thereafter remains constant. This activity pattern is called a saturation curve and the maximum activity occurs when this enzyme is saturated, when all enzymes are binding substrate. So, for example, see enzymes, kaning murag letter C here, those are enzymes. So, ang tunga are the active site. So, for when you increase the, the enzyme concentration, the plot will, I the plot, the uh, rate of reaction will also increase. But what if the enzyme is constant, the concentration of the enzyme is constant, and magsigi ka og dungan, dugang og substrate, of course, it will also increase, the rate of reaction will also increase until all the enzymes are saturated, meaning tanan na nabutangan o substrate. Uh, Substrate. And this is what we call the saturation curve. So this maximum activity occurs when the enzyme is saturated, again, when all the enzymes are binding substrate. So when the substrate molecules uh, occupy all the active sites in the enzyme available for a particular reaction, the enzyme is said to be saturated. And watch the curve class. Okay? So the, this activity, again, will increase the rate of reaction but it will come to a point nga ang constant eh, mag remain constant na ang rate of reaction or the rate constant because again saturated hurot naman imong enzyme dagan kay kag substrate pero wala nay enzyme na magbind sa ilaha so those are the four factors that can affect the rate of the enzyme activity temperature pH concentration of the substrate and of the enzyme now, let's go to inhibition of enzymes. So, what is inhibition? Inhibit. So, this velocity of an enzymatic reaction is decreased or inhibited by the same agent or inhibitors. So, this enzyme inhibitor, a factor that affects the enzyme activity, any substance that acts directly on an enzyme to slow or stop the normal catalytic function of an enzyme by binding to it. And it can be cellular metabolites or foreign substances such as drug or toxins that have either therapeutic or toxic effect. So, usually specific and work at low concentration. So, these are, we have two types of enzyme inhibitors, the irreversible and the reversible inhibitors. For reversible inhibitor, they are inhibitor interact with the enzyme through non-covalent association or dissociation reactions. And we have three types, the competitive, uncompetitive, and non-competitive reversible inhibitors. While for irreversible inhibit inhibitors, this inhibitor causes stable and covalent alteration in the enzyme. So this is again the reversible inhibitors and the irreversible inhibitors. Now for reversible, these inhibitors bind non-covalently or has a weak interaction with the enzyme. So if this inhibitor is removed, then the action of enzyme is fully restored. That is why it is called reversible. So the activity of enzyme is fully restored on removing this inhibitor by dialysis. And again, it has three types. So first is the competitive. 
So a competitive enzyme inhibitor is a molecule that sufficiently resembles an enzyme substrate in size or in shape and charge distribution and they bind to active site of the enzyme, thus preventing binding of the substrate to enzyme. So again, competitive, the same siya. So example, this is the active site of your enzyme, the same shape, ang competitive inhibitor, na siya the same shape with the substrate. Okay, and so it will bind to the active site of the enzyme and will inhibit the uh, enzyme substrate complex. So, in here, okay, competitive inhibitor interferes with active site of the enzyme so substrate cannot bind to the active site. So, this lowers the affinity of the enzyme towards the substrate in the presence of the competitive inhibitor. And so, the KM will increase and the V initial um, initial velocity also decreases. So, as you can see here in the graph, diba? those who have competitive uh, inhibitor will lower or will increase the KM and so, it has a lower, the substrate will have a lower affinity to the enzyme. So, there is a example here. Uh, so, for example, this is our enzyme. So, its um, substrate is succinate. So, once it is binded to the active site of the enzyme, it will form a substrate enzyme complex and will produce fumarate plus the enzyme. However, its competitive inhibitor is malonate. So, if there is a presence of malonate because they have the same size and the same shape, so once it is binded to the active site of the enzyme, the enzyme will now be inactive and cannot be it will be it was and uh, will be inhibited or is inhibited and so there will be no fumarate and uh fumarate form so this and so with this we can say that the competitive inhibitor can be reduced by simply increasing the concentration of the substrate so once we uh, increase the substrate concentration the inhib uh, competitive inhibitor inhibition i mean can be reduced we also have another example here. So the treatment for methanol poisoning involves giving a patient IV of ethanol. So the same enzyme, alcohol dehydrogenase, detoxifies both the methanol and ethanol, but the ethanol has 10 times the affinity of the enzyme than methanol has. So keeping the enzyme busy with the ethanol as a substrate gives the body time to excrete the methanol before it is oxidized to the potentially deadly formaldehyde. So diba si methanol must uh, toxic man siya compare kang ethanol because it will be oxidized into formal uh, methanol will be oxidized into formaldehyde so the next one is the uncompetitive inhibitor so this does not bind to the free enzyme so they will only bind to the enzyme substrate complex to yield the inactive esi complex so with the es plus the inhibitor so the inhibitor caused the structural distortion of the active site Thus, the enzyme became catalytically inactive. So, this will lower uh, the Vmax due to the inactive ESI complex. Lesser substrate is converted to product. So, again, class, this uncompetitive inhibitor will only bind to the enzyme that is already binded to the substrate. That is why forming in an ESI complex. For the non-competitive or mixed inhibitor, so this is an enzyme inhibitor, a molecule that decreases enzyme activity by binding to a site other than the active site or the allosteric site. So this allosteric site is the site other than the active site. And this causes the change in the overall 3D shape of the enzyme. So for example, this is the active site, this is the allosteric site. So once the non-competitive inhibitor is binded to the uh, allosteric site, it will change the shape of the active site and so, delay na maka um, bind C substrate. So, a combination of competitive and uncompetitive and a non-competitive inhibitor binds enzyme regardless of whether the substrate is bound. So, unlike for um, uncompetitive inhibitor in hanglan binded sa C uh, substrate or kang competitive, dapat dili pa binded C substrate so, whether the substrate is binded already or not, the non-competitive can inhibit the enzyme. So, examples of non-competitive inhibitors include the heavy metal ions 
And the binding sites for these ions are the sulfa hydryl groups located away from the active site. So these metal sulfide linkage are formed, an effect that disrupts the secondary and the tertiary structure. So as you can see here by the presentation, mag-change ang shape sa active site. So again, these are the th uh, three reversible enzyme inhibition. Now let's go to irreversible inhibitor. So this bind tightly or form strong covalent bonds with the functional groups of the amino acids in the active site so they cannot dissociate from the enzyme. So irreversible inhibitors destroy the active site of the enzyme permanently and decrease the rate of reaction. So this again inverse inhibitor uh, inverse enzyme inhibitor will permanently deactivate the enzyme. So the enzyme activity is not regained by either increasing the concentration of substrate, just like in competitive um, or reversible na inhibition. Na you have to, uh, you just have to add more substrate in order to reduce the competitive, uh, reversible or competitive inhibition. Now, example for irreversible inhibitor, the aspirin. Aspirin's ability to suppress the production of prostaglandin. So these prostaglandins are uh, cause that can cause inflammation. So this aspirin can suppress the production of these prostaglandins that is due to its irreversible active inactivation of the cyclooxygenase enzyme. So this cyclooxygenase is required for the prostaglandin synthesis. So the aspirin causes covalent modification in a cyclo oxygenase na enzyme. So this will, the aspirin will inhibit the cyclooxygenase and so forming a covalent bond and so forming an irreversible uh, or doing an irreversible inhibition to this enzyme. Another example is penicillin or ampicillin. So irrever they irreversibly inhibits transpeptidase by reacting with a serine residue in the transpeptidase this, that is an enzyme that catalyzes the synthesis of the bacterial cellular wall. Now, these are the importance of enzymes. So, the enzymes play an important role in metabolism, diagnosis, and therapeutics. Metabolism, enzymes are the biological catalyst that speed up the metabolic reaction that occur in the body. Diagnosis, the level of enzyme in blood, therapeutics, digestive enzyme. So for metabolism, all chemical reactions in the living organism requires enzymes to work. <clears throat> and for metabolism, there are anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism, building of molecules. And kata, breaking down molecules. So you can see here that in when we intake food, so first it will also first go, to, of, of course, sa ato ang aba -aba. And sa ato ang aba -aba, we have amylase there. And that is a enzyme. Okay, so this participates in the digest, in digesting starch. And then after sa itong baba, sa ito ang mouth, it will go to our stomach, which has an HCL that denatures protein, pepsin, and pepsin, which begins the degradation of proteins. After the, into the stomach, into the pancreas, this will secrete proteus enzyme, proteolytic enzymes, such as cysteine and chymotypsin that continue the de degradation of proteins. So, we can see here that even in metabolism, uh, important ang enzymes. Okay? And also in citric acid cycle. So in citric acid cycle, we do have uh, it involves a very large or different kinds of enzymes. Now for diagnosis, the levels of enzymes in the blood often indicates that there is tissue damage in an organ and that cellular contents are spilling out or leaking into the bloodstream. So the level of specific enzyme in the plasma frequently correlates with the extent of tissue damage. So example, our normal cell turnover just uh, anang ginagmay lang ang pag-release sa ato ang, uh, spe specific enzymes. Okay, level of specific enzyme. However, in necrosis or localized death of living tissues, so there is a um, trauma or high or increased plasma levels of this intracellular enzyme due to cell damage. So these are different kinds of uh, enzyme acid, acid for diagnostic purposes. So for example, if you are found with ACP in your prostate, so you could have a prostate cancer. So if there are amylase in your uh, pancreas are increased, I mean increase or too much, um, presence of amylase 
in your pancreas, it may have a acute pancreatitis or peptic ulcer. So, in liver, if you can be found or this uh, too much um, can be found, uh, too much enzymes of this class is present in your liver, you could have this condition. Now, we also have isozymes for diagnostic purposes. So, isozymes are slightly different form of the same enzyme produced by different tissues. So, serum levels of isozymes can be used in the diagnosis of a wide range of disease. So, a given substrate may be acted upon by a number of different enzymes, each of which uses the same substrate and produces the same products. So, the individual number of a set of enzymes sharing such characteristics are known as isoenzymes. So, in healthy tissues, these enzymes are contained within cellular membranes, and if the cells of particular organ are damaged, the contents, including the enzymes, spill into the blood. So, by identifying the isoenzyme that becomes elevated in the blood serum, it is possible to determine which type of tissues has been damaged. So, for example, if the liver, liver diseases can be detected by a rise in the serum LDH5, Okay, LDH5 level. So, you may have a liver or skeletal muscle disease because an increase or there is a detection of LDH5. Now, enzymes in therapy. Substitute to missing digestive enzymes like digestive uh, pepsin and trypsin could also be used for removal of deposits of dead tissues or fibrin. In the lungs or in the eyes, it could also be treatment of skin defects using these enzymes and accelerates acceleration of feb febrinolysis in lungs or embolization. So enzymes act as anti-clotting agents like fibrinolytic and thrombolytic. And a recent advance in treating heart attacks is the use of tissue plasminogen activator, which activates the enzyme plasminogen. When so activated, this enzyme dissolves blood clots in the heart and often provides immediate relief. So, uh, also enzymes in industrial use, they can be used in the textile industry. Example, amylase is used as a softening agent for starch clothes. Also in paper manufacturing, endoxylenases for bleaching of wood pulp. And for manufacturing of organic compounds like bacterial enzymes for manufacturing acetone and etc. Also enzymes also enzymes that are used in the food industry, pectinase, breakdown of substances in apple cell walls and enable greater juice extraction, lactase for uh, lactose in milk into glucose and galatose. This makes milk drinkable for lactose intolerant people. And also in meat industry, the papain which is a proteolytic in action proteolytic in action, therefore hydrolyzes peptide bonds, thus tenderize the meat and the beef. Also, the in the manufacturing of cheese, the renin or thymosin found in stomach converts milk protein casein to curd like calcium paracicinate. So, also, uh, enzymes that are used in biological washing powders, sa mga sabon, when we do our laundry. So, our powders, washing powders and liquids contain enzymes that help Remove stains, so katong micelle na to class, the enzymes are coated with a special wax that melts in the wash, releasing the enzymes, and once the stains have been broken down, they are easier for the detergent to remove. So example, in, uh, in our washing powders and liquids, it consists of proteases, so this will break down proteins, lipases, break down fats and oils, carbohydrates, breaks down carbohydrates or uh, stains such as starch. So, we also have regulation of enzyme activity. So we have to regulate regulate our enzyme activity because to coordinate metabolic processes, promote adaptations to environmental changes, and growth and complete the living cycle in the correct way. So for metabolic process, a cell that continually produces large amounts of an enzyme for which substrate concentration is always very low is just wasting energy. So, the production of the enzyme needs to be turned off. So, a product of an enzyme catalyzed reaction that is present in plentiful or kung daghan na kaayo ang naproduce sa enzyme catalyzed reaction, 
we have to stop it or just deactivate it para dili siya waste of energy sa ato ang cells inside our body. So, for mechanism of regulation of enzyme activity, we have three. Control of the enzyme availability, or what we call feedback control, associated with the allosteric enzyme, or the non-competitive inhibition, remember? And the control of the enzymatic activity using covalent modification of the conformation of structure, or the irreversible inhibition, and then the production of cymogens. So we have here, first, the feedback control. So this, again, allosteric we have allosteric enzymes, so they have two receptor sites. One side fits the substrate and the other side fits an inhibitor or activator molecule. So this allosteric inhibitor of an enzyme participates in the feedback regulation and it is an enzyme inhibitor that binds to a site other than the active site. So we also have two feedback control or allosteric inhibition. And allosteric activation, so it could be positive or negative allosteric effectors. So if positive, this will enhance or increase the enzymatic activity, while negative will inhibit the activity, enzyme activity. So you can see here, again, the allosteric inhibition or activation will um, bind to the allosteric site, or this is the site other than the active site. So, for example, for inhibitor, it will change. Once it is binded, it will change the active site na shape in order for the substrate not to be binded or not to be affinated to that um, enzyme. However, for allosteric activation, if you have uh, lahi iyahang shape, iyahang iparyas of shape sa shape sa substrate in order to increase the enzyme activity. So, for feedback control, is a process in which activation or inhibition of the first reaction in a reaction sequence is controlled by a product of the reaction sequence. As the enzyme's end product accumulates, it inhibits the enzyme by binding to the first enzyme in the pathway. So this will shut down the entire sequence. So this control of the enzyme, uh, this control the enzyme's availability. So example class, you have here your enzyme and your substrate, it will bind together and will form a product and then bind again together will form a product and bind again together and will form the endpoint or the product and this product here will bind to the allosteric part and inhibit the um, enzymatic product uh, enzymatic uh, reaction so in here this diagram below or this diagram illustrates a hypothetical multi-step biochemical process in which the rate of the an early step the, the, the rate of an early step is affected by the concentration of a later step. So this is the feedback control. So this isoleucine, the end product of the different multi-step of biochemical process, will, uh, once the isoleucine level rise, it will bind to the allosteric site of the enzyme 1 and inhibits the enzyme. And so, mag-stop ang production of Isoleucine. So, in feedback inhibition, the end product of a metabolic pathway shuts down the pathway. So, feedback inhibition prevents a cell from wasting chemical resources by synthesizing more product than is needed. So, it is uh, used. Especially, example, kung daghan na kayo isoleucine nga na-produce, diba? you need to stop. Eh, sayang lang man ang energy. Sayang lang ang met, uh, time or ang mga resources nga gigamit in order to produce, uh, produce isoleucine if it is too much na ang production. So, it needs feedback control or feedback inhibition. Next is the irreversible inhibition is what we have uh, discussed earlier. So, these irreversible inhibitors bind tightly or form strong covalent bonds with the functional groups of the amino acids in the active site so they cannot dissociate from the enzyme. So, this irreversible inhibitor destroys the active site of the enzyme permanently and decreases the rate of reaction. Now, these are the application of the inhibitors. Negative feedback, so endpoint or end pro product inhibition, so the feedback control. And then also for medicine, just like using our or drinking or intake of antibiotics, sulfon sulfonamides, sedatives, and stimulides. Also, if, if we, for poisons like snake bite, plant alkaloids, and nerve gases. The last one here, 
to regulate the enzyme activity is the zymogens. So a second mechanism for regulating cellular enzyme activity is based on the production of enzymes in an inactive form such as zymogens. So zymogens or proenzymes, again, zymogens are the inactive enzyme precursor are then turned on to become active at an appropriate time. So some enzymes are produced as zymogens because the reactions they catalyze are undesirable at the site of production. So dili pa sila inactive sila kay dili pa sila kinahanglan. Okay? And when there is appropriate time na kailangan sila, they have to be turned on. So turned on. So example si pepsinogen. So this is the zymogen, the inactive form, uh, inactive enzyme precursor. Once it is activated, it will become pepsin. Okay? So uh, pa? Uh, pothrombin, it will active form, active enzyme is thrombin. So again, they are turned on or activated once they are needed in the production. Now, a proteolytic enzyme, so most digestive and blood clotting enzyme is an enzyme that catalyzes the breaking of the peptide bonds that maintain the primary structure of a protein. So this because of proteolytic enzyme would destroy the tissues that produce them Proteolytic enzymes are generated in an inactive form or zymogens and then later when they are needed, they are converted to their active form. So again, so ang zymogens class, they are also enzymes but they are inactive. But once they are needed at an appropriate time, they are converted to their active form. So example is the proteolytic, proteolytic enzyme because proteolytic enzyme, they hydrolyze the proteins, the peptide bonds, and so, para dili sila diritso mag-hydrolyze sa peptide bonds, they will they are generated as zymogen. So, on sa unang put to activate this zymogen. So, to activate this zymogen, just remove the part, okay, or the, by removal of some part of that zymogen. So, pag remove ana nga part, the zymogen or the enzyme is now activated. So, that is the last slide, or this is the last slide that ends our topic on enzyme and next meeting or by next week we will have our quiz on enzyme if you have questions you can ask me through email or yeah you can ask me through email just uh, email me um during ano uh, anytime but wait for my reply okay so thank you so much for listening i hope you have learned a lot about enzyme our next topic will be carbohydrates so thank you and goodbye